Hi friends, it's Tracy from the Financial Freedom Diary and today we are back to do my paycheck number two budget using the Budget Moms workbook. I always forget the name so I always have to go back and look the budget by paycheck workbook. Um, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe below. Hope you all are having a super fantastic Sunday. Thought I would get this budget out of the way and then on Tuesday I will reconcile my checking account make sure all the bills that i need to pay from paycheck number one have already processed um i have been going back in and filling in when the actuals do process been doing some pen testing to see uh which one shows up better i think the uh, 0.7 tip in the inner gel works better you know i'm used to using the 0.5 tip in the precise v5 so this is kind of new to me but yeah i'm going to use the 0.7 here and zoom you guys in so that way you can see better um but yeah this is like my whole monthly budget here and you'll see that for most things i don't split them between the two paychecks the things that are split between the two paychecks are things that are taken directly out of my check and they're going either to health insurance or to the credit union they split between the two, but most of the time I just use one check to do one specific task. Now, I am going to speed you guys up as I set up all the categories, and then we'll walk through what is my budgeted amount. I just noticed that I did not write in my paycheck date. So this one's going to be received on 4-15. Um, I got you guys already zoomed in. So let me know how this looks to you guys. Um, I can see, but I am wearing my glasses today. <laughs> so that always helps, right? Um, my income for my second paycheck is going to be twenty. Six hundred seventy-two dollars and forty-six cents. I don't know why I was going to say twenty-six dollars and seventy-two cents, but yeah, twenty-six seventy-two point four six, and so that is going to be my income total. I am salaried. I get paid the last day of the month and the fifteenth of the month. 46 so the first thing that comes automatically out of my check is for the boys and that comes out on the 15th and that's $60 health insurance will come out on the 15th and so will identity theft and so my health insurance is about $14 now and no complaints from me. Um, identity theft is three dollars and fifty cents. Now my car insurance that I'm estimating at ninety-five dollars, and that comes out on the twenty-eighth.
sorry. Those long numbers were just bugging the crap out of me. But MLGW. Now, MLGW, that is the utility company in Memphis. And so that's light, gas, and water. Um, they don't have where you can make the one payment and you make the same payment all year round. Um, I can prepay my utilities, which I don't trust MLGW like that. It may just be a me thing. But, um, I mean, like, I don't even let them take money directly out of my account. So, the, I pay that on the 26th. I know it was the 26th in March and February. And so, it's starting to kind of stabilize. I don't know why they changed my date. You know, like, I don't know why. It used to be early in the month. Now, I, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. I estimate that to be $275. I've been doing really good this month with the utilities. So I do expect it to go, to come in under my budgeted amount. Uh, for Sprint, Sprint, I am estimating $75. And Sprint, I wanna say, cause this one has moved too. It used to be on the 15th, and now it's been about the 17th or 18th. So I'm going to put the 17th. And for Xfinity, it can be the 17th or 18th. I'm not sure what happened, but I'm going to put that one down for the 18th. Because between these two, one of them comes out first and one comes out uh, the very next day. And so for Xfinity, I'm going to estimate $112. And for gas, that's gas for my car. I'm going to estimate $40 for gas for the car. And I got to make sure I stay in frame because I've gotten so used to using the Erin Condren with the black pen. I write big enough and I don't have to zoom in. <laughs> so I can write all around the page and now I can't because I can get out of frame real quick. So, let's say 60 plus 14 plus 350 plus 95 plus 275 plus 75 plus 112 plus 40. And so, that's $674.50. I'm going to do that one more time. That's $60 plus $14 plus three dollars and fifty cents plus ninety five dollars plus two seventy five plus seventy five plus one one two a hundred and twelve <laughs> plus forty is six hundred seventy four dollars and fifty cents did I say six seventy four the first time yeah okay relax 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 we're gonna do this one one more time and I swear I said sixty Focus 14 plus three dollars and fifty cents plus ninety-five dollars plus two seventy-five plus seventy-five plus one twelve plus forty. Yes, six seventy-four fifty. My brain was stuck on if I put three hundred and fifty dollars in for the identity theft that I couldn't remember what I said was the total. So six seventy-four fifty. And I do have my bills down to where are the bare essentials <laughs> for me. Um, just until I get out of debt. I didn't want any other monthly expenses coming out and put as much as I could to my debt. So you can see that those are the two sections I have filled in for the budget for paycheck number two. But when it was paycheck number one, there was a little something in all the buckets. So bills cash envelopes, sinking funds, and debt had amounts in there. So that's the difference between these two uh, paychecks. Um, not necessarily a, like I don't feel deprived or anything the way I do this because I make sure I feed myself first at the beginning of the month. You know, I'm doing all the things I need to take care of myself with my first paycheck and then I have this paycheck to pay on my debt and also still take care of the four walls that I need around here. And if you wonder why I use my, put my son's savings as a bill, 
The reason why is because that's not my savings. It's not money I can tap into. It actually goes into their accounts. It's only a little bit. So they get like $60 a month from me through that account. And it's a very old transaction. And I just never stopped it. Makes me feel like I'm doing something, right? <laughs> so my total income was 27. No, it wasn't. 2672.46. I'm just messing up today. And I'm going to subtract out my bills, which is $674.50. And so the balance is $1,000. $997.96. And because I just can't leave well enough alone, <laughs> um, my leftover here is going to be in the envelope section. This is where my cash envelopes will go. I'm going to drag this down. $1997.96. I have a zero envelope total. And... 1997.96 there so now I'm going to come over to my sinking funds I have no savings for the sinking funds so I'm going to do the same thing um, I just can't for some reason just have these buckets and I don't want to cross it out I don't know why that bugs me more than just leaving an empty space um zero and so I have 1997.96. I was going to say 1997 was a good year, but I honestly don't remember it. <laughs> uh, 1997.96. Now to the debt. I don't have a due date for my debt. I put everything in the extra debt because I don't have a minimum payment. Because we're on for forbearance right now so for s13 i'm going with a nice round 100 dollars for t20 100 dollars and then the difference is going to go to r18 and so that is one thousand seven hundred ninety seven dollars in 96 cents. I'm not sure why I thought that was too high. But anywho, 1797.96 plus 100 plus 100, 1997.96. I'm not sure why I just used my calculator. Don't judge me. You can judge me. It's okay. Um, and my leftover is zero. Um, bringing that down to the extra savings. Because at some point I will be here to doing that once I get all of that. Just I don't know life out. <laughs> and so now I'm going to take my total income, follow these instructions. 2672.46, subtract out my bill total, which is 674.50. Subtract out my debt. Oh, you see that? 997.96 and zero. I have a zero base budget. And you can't see that, can you? Um, and there it is, y'all. There it is. It is a wrap. I am done. Uh, no cash envelopes, so I don't have to worry about filling that out. I do like getting my cash envelopes once a month. It was an adjustment for me, I have to admit. Um, and that was because I was so used to... I was... What was I doing? I would be real conservative week one, and then about week two, I would just have this massive spending urge and then get my cash for middle of the month and then be conservative one week and then massive spending the next and I just wanted to kind of level that out and taper that out and so it's been a <laughs> a work in progress to kind of retrain myself and figure out 
a flow that works for me when it comes to how I manage my cash envelopes. And plus, it keeps me from going to the bank. I don't like going to the bank multiple times throughout the month. And this just saves me time. So I won't be filling out this sheet here. When I do get paid from YouTube, I'm going to use this workbook to log that in. Um, it's going to be a little bit different because I won't have bills, won't have cash envelopes. I guess I'll just have sinking funds, extra debt, and extra savings. No, it'll just be sinking funds and extra debt when it's the YouTube income. So I'm learning and I am uh, filling it out, as you can see. Um, I will have my dentist appointment before the end of the month and so I'll know if I had enough money <laughs> for medical and stuff to take care of what they're going to do in this next visit um, if there's anything left over to put to my car maintenance um, sinking fund to close that portion of paycheck number one out so I have to wait for that appointment before I do that and then I also got to pay my quarterly taxes before I forget. And I probably should just do that today when I log off, right? Cut the crap. But anywho, have you guys uh, been keeping up with your budget, been reconciling everything? Do you reconcile online or on paper? I write down on paper, but technically the reconciliation is online. So y'all know I, I like online tools just do math better than I do, right? <laughs> But let me know what is your technique. And if you are or are not a zero-based budgeter, I'm interested in knowing that too. Because, you know, I don't feel that there's a right or a wrong way to do it. This just works better for me because everything has a job. And I know what that job is. If I forget, I know where to go and look and figure out what that job is. So I don't do anything silly. I've done that in the past. But thank y'all for watching and y'all have a super fantastic Sunday and I will talk to you guys on Tuesday. Bye.